Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this Kahoot, it's going to be a short one, but on this Kahoot, we're going to be going over oral cavity disorders. Now, before we get started, as always, I'm going to ask you to please support me and support this channel by liking this video. Go ahead and give it a thumbs up. You're going to love it. Please support this channel by doing that. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And don't forget, I'm now offering Next Generation NCLEX reviews. I have a part one and part two session. To reserve your spot, go to my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. If you're a current nursing student, I have plenty of audio lessons available for you. You can check that out at my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Almost daily, you can find me covering a variety of nursing topics across my social media platform, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. My handle is the same everywhere, Nexus Nursing. Now, without any further ado, guys, let's get started. Oral cavity disorders. First question. Okay, which complication of stomatitis is most life-threatening? Would it be pain? Would it be bleeding? Would it be infection or xerostomia? Which complication of stomatitis is most life-threatening? Pain, bleeding, infections, xerostomia. Wow, 32 people went with uh, bleeding. I want you to think about stomatitis. So by the way, guys, stomatitis has nothing to do with a person's stomach. Stomatitis is when someone has, you know, um, inflammation of the oral mucosa, right? They're going to have pain. They're going to have inflammation of the oral mucosa. Now, yes, the patient may have some bleeding, but guess what? They are not going to have enough bleeding to the point that it's life-threatening. Whenever you're asked a question about um, which complication is most life-threatening, you need to think about what can actually kill the patient. That patient with stomatitis, if you saw the picture that I put up of what stomatitis looked like, yeah, they may have some bleeding, but it's light. It's not enough um, to cause them to be anemic or for their organs to shut down, right? It's not enough for them to hemorrhage to death. But guess what? Patients who have stomatitis is usually caused by, you know, an infection. And God forbid that infection gets into the bloodstream. Now that patient's, what, turns septic. A complication of stomatitis is sepsis. It can, act, it can definitely happen, and that can put that patient's life at risk. And that's why infection is the correct answer, not bleeding. Even though a patient can bleed during stomatitis, it's not that bad that they would die or they would be at risk of death. But with infection, it is, okay? Okay, someone said, can you fix the screen, please? I'll try my best. Is this better? There you go. Okay, type in your answer. Which is the most common complaint of patients with stomatitis? Type in your answer. If you're not in uh, the Kahoot, go ahead and just type your answer on the live, guys. Type in your answer. What do you think is the most common complaint of patients with stomatitis? Yeah, most of you guys got it on the live. Pain. Yes. And so I saw a lot of, you know, um, I saw a lot of poor appetite. I saw a lot of not being able to eat, but the source of it is from what? That mouth pain, they're having mouth pain so they don't want to eat. So here's the thing, even though um, infection is more life-threatening, pain is more common in stomatitis. Think about it. They've got painful irritation, swelling of um, the oral mucosa. All right, which is true about oral candy? Can I can never say that word. Candidiasis. You see that word? I can't say it, but you see it. Which is true about it? Is it? In, it's an inflammatory disease. It's a bacterial infection. Um, Long-term treatment of antibiotics can be a cause, or it's a precursor to oral cancer. Candidiasis. Can't. I can never say that word. Forgive me, guys. You know I can't speak. 
Wow. Okay. Most of you guys chose it's a bacterial infection. Okay. You see this word right here that I can never, for the death of me, I can never pronounce. This is a fungal infection. Okay. So it's not going to come from a bacteria. It's a fungal infection. So the correct answer is long-term treatment of antibiotics can be the cause. And let me explain to you why. In your mouth, in your oral mucosa, in your vagina, in your gut, you have what's known as, um, what's it called? Um, normal flora. Okay. So that is, um, the normal, um, bacteria that is found in your guts and your vagina and your mouth. It, it's normal. It actually keeps the fungus in check. So any patient who's been taking antibiotics long, long term, what do antibiotics do? They kill bacteria. They kill the bad bacteria, but they also kill the good bacteria, the normal flora. So when the good bacteria, that normal flora goes away, guess what? Fungus is like, woohoo, there's nothing to keep us in check. Let's just have an overgrowth. Right. And so you'll see if you saw the picture that I put up, when you look in that patient's mouth, you see all that whiteness. That's the fungus. Right. And that can happen if the patient has been on antibiotics too much because those antibiotics kill the normal flora. And the normal flora is what keeps the fungus in check. OK. So it's not um, an inflammatory disease. It's definitely not a bacterial infection. And it's not a precursor to cancer. The only correct answer is that patients taking antibiotics for a long time can have um, oral candidiasis. I'm not saying it right, but you see the word. All right. Also known as what? Thrush, which is a type. Okay. How should you perform mouth care for a patient with stomatitis? Cleanse the mouth with alcohol-based mouthwash. Cleanse the mouth with lemon glycerin swabs. Cleanse the mouth with a saline-soaked gauze. Or cleanse the mouth vigorously with betadine. The pin to get in is 578-3996. Very good. Most of you guys chose the correct answer. With saline. Here's the thing. Remember, guys, this is very painful, right? All of that swelling inflammation is very painful in their mouth. We don't want anything that's irritating. So nothing with alcohol or lemon, right? That's very acidic. It's very irritating to the oral mucosa. We don't want to do that. And look at the last one. There's nothing wrong with the beta dine because it's used often. But look at what I wrote. I said, cleanse the mouth. How? Vigorously. This is painful. Do you want to do anything vigorously to their oral mucosa? Absolutely not. You're going to cause more pain. And so that's why cleansing the mouth with saline soaked gauze is the correct answer. Guys, you've got to pay attention to details. That's how you get easy questions wrong. One word will completely change an answer choice. Okay. So make sure you're reading very closely. Okay. Your patient has herpes simplex stomatitis. Which medication would you expect to be ordered? Look at that mouth. Would you expect nystatin, acyclovir, chlorhexidine, or tetracycline? Your patient has herpes simplex stomatitis. Which med do you expect to be ordered? Very good. A cyclovir, vir for what? Virus, V-I-R, virus. Herpes simplex, that is a viral infection. Now, um, the wrong answer choice, you have nystatin, that's an antifungal. Um, you have chlorhexidine, that's a tom topical anesthetic. And then you have tetracycline, that's an antibiotic. So a cyclovir, that's what you'd expect to be ordered because this patient has a viral infection. Very good. And by the way, the chlorhexidine, that's a topical antiseptic. All right. Which statement about the risk of oral cancer indicates a need for further teaching? I will brush and floss twice a day. I will stop smoking. I'll slow down on my drinking. I'll stop smoking and only chew tobacco. Which statement about the risk of oral cancer indicates a need for further teaching?
Very good. Whenever you get a test question that asks about a need for further teaching, a need for clarification, a need for follow-up, what they're really asking you is which one is the wrong thing to do? Which one is the wrong thing to say? And in this case, saying that, oh, I'll stop smoking, but I'll only chew tobacco. Hello? You're still increasing your risk for oral cancer. So that is the wrong thing to say. That's the one that requires further teaching. Everything else is good. I will brush and floss twice a day. That's a good thing because let me tell you what happens. You eat and that food gets stuck between your teeth. It gets stuck in the gums and it just sits there day in and day out. Guess what happened? Bacteria starts to grow. Stuff starts to, um, what's the word we use? Um, I can't think of the word, but um, bacteria starts to grow. And guess what? It can eventually start changing the lining of your mouth, right? And those cells can start to change. So it's very important. Patient eats, you want to get that food out of there. You don't want fester. That's the word I was looking for. The food um, starts to fester. We don't want that to happen. So that's good. Nothing wrong with that. I will stop smoking. Good. There's nothing wrong with that. We want them to see smoking, right? I will slow down on my drinking. Good. We don't want you drinking excessively. So the only one that requires further teaching would be, oh, I'll stop smoking tobacco, but I'll still chew it. Which symptom would alert you to the possibility of metastasis of oral cancer? Would it be thickening of the oral mucosa, fixed cervical lymph nodes, red or white patches on the tongue, or not? <coughs> excuse me, non-healing sore on the lip? <coughs> excuse me. Which symptom would alert you to the possibility of metastasis of oral cancer? Okay, fixed cervical lymph nodes. What does that word metastasis mean? That means to spread, so the cancer has spread. What would alert us to let us think, okay, this cancer has spread. It started out as oral cancer, but now we think it spread. It would be fixed cervical lymph nodes. Look at the other choices. All of the other choices, that cancer is still what? Localized in the oral cavity. Thickening of the buccal mucosa. Red or white patches on the tongue. <laughs> excuse me guys i'm getting over a cold non-healing sore on the lip all of those have been contained within the oral cavity but the cervical lymph nodes we see instead of it being soft and being easily um you can easily move uh, move it right it's fixed it's hard and it's in the lymph the cervical lymph node that makes us think okay this cancer has spread Okay, which nursing diagnosis is a priority for the patient with oral cancer? Would it be acute pain, knowledge deficit, impaired oral mucous membranes, or ineffective airway clearance? Okay, very good. Ineffective airway clears. We don't care about anything if our patient's not breathing. 10 of you chose impaired oral mucous membranes. Who cares about those mucous membranes if the patient's dead? Who cares about if the patient's not breathing? 10 of you chose acute pain. Who cares about the patient's pain if the patient is not breathing? Maslow's hierarchy of needs. What is most important to us? What is priority? ABCs, airway, breathing, circulation, nutrition, fluid and electrolytes, glucose, vital signs, anything that physiologically keeps your patient alive. Let me tell you something. Pain never killed anyone except in certain situations, right? You guys remember what those are? You only choose pain as a priority in specific situations, such as what? Cancer, um, sickle cell, stones, uh, myocardial infarction, I'm missing one, burns, right? That's when pain is a priority because that pain is so severe, it can affect the patient's physiological status. But outside of that, pain isn't a priority. Okay, last question. Your patient with oral cancer has a platelet count of 30,000. 
What should be your nursing, uh, your priority nursing intervention? Is it to use a soft bristle toothbrush? Is it to use only lemon glycerin swabs? Is it for oral care, use a firm toothbrush? Or is it to use only a disposable foam brush for oral care? Okay, most of you guys chose the correct answer. Use a soft bristle toothbrush. I want you to think about it. Platelets are important for keeping you from bleeding out, from hemorrhaging to death, right? Normal platelets are supposed to be 150,000 to about 400,000. This patient only has 30,000 platelets. They are at risk for hemorrhage. So we have to do everything possible to keep them safe, to prevent them from bleeding out. So they have to brush their teeth with a soft bristle toothbrush. If they have to shave, they have to use an electric razor. We have to be very careful with this patient. We have to be checking the urine. We have to be checking the stool. We have to be checking um, um, if they spit up. What's the word? Saliva is not the word I'm looking for, but it'll come to me. Anyway, any, any um, drainage from that patient's body, we have to be checking because we're concerned about that patient bleeding out, losing blood because the platelet count is way too low. You're going to be concerned about hemorrhage. All right, guys, this was quick and easy. Let's see how you did.